Welcome back. We've come a long way. We've gotten started with uh, Azure repos. We learned how you can manage Azure repos, uh, push, pull, uh, commit your code. Then over the last few videos, we uh, learned how you can manage Azure pipelines. We wrote our Azure pipeline in YAML. We created a bunch of tasks, then environments and deployed our software infrastructure onto Azure. Uh, in this module, we're going to get started with the administration and the user management uh, into Azure we're gonna get started with uh, looking at what's the best practices around creating uh, organization and project underneath the uh, organization so how the hierarchy works is you get the organization first uh, let's suppose you've got you are one of the organization and you work for multiple clients uh, so this has got your client a client B maybe Google Facebook Yahoo so you've got a number of clients uh, and that's how you can manage them as an organization now once you've got clients I've got the engineering code red and this is my project so you can have multiple projects underneath the organization and then underneath the project you can manage your uh, teams and you can manage uh, your your users underneath it so if you go to the dashboard uh, you see the organization setting over here this is for the organization level how you want, want to manage the permission uh, for the organization for different organization how you want to manage the auditing uh, billing user project so that's that's at the highest level uh, the uppermost level which is managing the permission and users all sort of things for organization how about once you've gotten into one of the project underneath an organization so you've got your code red underneath this engineering code red organization if you click over here you would see that the organization setting has changed to project settings now now this setting is bifurcated and dedicated for your project which is code red project now you could have multiple projects and for all of them you could manage different project setting so let's get started what we have in store for us so it gets started as soon as you uh, by the way I am one of the administrator that's why I am able to see all of these uh, information under the project settings there are high chances if you're not administrator uh, you wouldn't be able to see uh, these Setting and we encourage you to have more than one administrator just in case one of the administrator is logged out or not able to log in for s some reason or any reason uh, one of the other administrator can always log in so in the overview section you could have you could see that you've got your overview about the project and over here the process you have selected if you click on on the process you would see that these are the process and you can change the process as well if you go back and then the visibility uh, private or public uh, obviously if you're working for uh, your client you would want it to keep the setting as private so that uh, none of none of uh, nobody apart from the organization has the ability to uh, view the projects and over the project administrator if you click on the administrator you could add multiple administrators so if i this has to be any microsoft or a github account so i could uh, pass on my personal outlook account that's my one of the microsoft account and add the uh, one of the administrator over there as well so as soon as i hit on the save uh, i do have one more administrator apart from me if you scroll down a bit uh, you would see that the number of services you're using uh, let's suppose for co code red project we haven't used uh, the artifacts and uh, test plans you could probably remove these plans so that people are not even using it uh, if you don't need it so what we need for this particular project is uh, repos boards and the pipelines and that's what we have enabled there's a delete project as well uh, you could always disable it for the end users and keep it enabled for only the administrator in case you want to delete the project for any reason all right that's about the overview if we come back to the team now you've got the code red project as soon as you create a code red uh, project uh, give it any name to the project a by default permission team is created and it gets in it inherits the permission from the contributor we're going to see what contributor is however if you have multiple teams underneath the code red so let's suppose you've got an infra team 
and um, and then you can cre create and you would see that you have got bunch of teams available so and you could have testing team and hit on create and now you see that it has got multiple teams now you can manage your members within these teams underneath this particular project if you go to any of the so if you hit on new team uh, the first option is the name of the team uh, let's suppose uh, you given name as dotnet developers all right then you can add the members i'll probably add and then uh, add the description uh, administrator you can probably add them or remove them but you need to have at least one of the administrator so i'm going to add myself this and add admin as the member and if you look at the permission you would see that there are a bunch of permissions by default permissions already available if you don't select anything it gonna select the contributor permission uh, we're gonna look at them one by one what are these permission and how you can manage uh, and edit these permission levels you've got build administrator contributors we're gonna look at them one by one for now we're gonna keep it as, as contributor which is the by default and then we're gonna hit on create all right uh, since we use dot that's why it's kind of showing us the error all right so we've got the multiple uh, projects uh, rather teams underneath our project so just in case you've got you don't want to create multiple projects however you want to create different teams and manage different permission for them this is beneficial for uh, a team which has got a large number of users and uh, uh, yeah we recommend you to create uh, more teams so that you can have a granular access and maintain a granular permission uh, for all of these uh, teams so you see that uh, you've already got a users and if you click on it uh, you can select them as the default team at the moment default is the code red project team because that's the one by default created uh, when you create a project all right uh, we promised to so show you how you can manage the permission if you go to the permission right over here you see that we've got bunch of uh, permissions right over here and you see that the teams we have created a couple of minutes back are right over here intra team testing team and by default it inherits from the contributor if you go over here infra team and kind of click on the member of you would see that the contributor is read, uh, written over here which means it is inheriting all the permissions from the contributor let's go back to the permission and see the by default one so we get started with the build administrator this is uh, one of the permission wherein people from infrastructure team or IT support or DevOps team you want to manage them you want to add over here uh, this is uh, beneficial for the users or group uh, whom you want to create modify or delete the build definitions uh, remember we created the build definition and uh, if you want, want group to manage the builds you would probably want to add them if you click over here uh, you could add the members right over here I could add uh, the members right over here hit on save and we've got the members right over here so if you go back to the permission uh, the next one is the contributor contributor is one of those permission which is by default one and this is uh, a set of permission wherein it lets user to have uh, have a lot of features like it can add modify delete items within the team project so this is one of the elevated uh, permission this one I've created uh, just before the uh, demo so this is one of the custom uh, group just like the infra and testing which we've created then we've got the endpoint administrator this is uh, generally required for um, ad administrator and creators uh, this is for the service connection remember we've got service connection right over here uh, service connection just to give you a recap it's one of those uh, hook or connection which your Azure DevOps and the end uh, end product can communicate with. So if you want your Azure DevOps to communicate with Azure, uh, you could use any of these connection type. If you want your Azure DevOps to connect with Chef, you could use this endpoint. If you want Azure DevOps to connect with Docker, you could use these endpoints and there are a bunch of other um, endpoints available. So if you want the users to manage these service connection, you would put them under 
endpoints administrator or creators whatever is deemed appropriate project administrator is again the the one of the highest level permission uh, you would want to give to probably the the project owners or the infrastructure uh, lead or somebody who's who manages uh, the azure devops features users and stuff like that you would like them to add under the project administrator then we've got the readers this is specifically needed when you want people to have a limited set of features maybe contractors or maybe maybe end client or somebody with with you want don't want them to to probably tweak any settings or uh, just a limited set of features then we've got release administrator this is again uh, remember we create some release definition and if we would like people to manage those releases you would add uh, the users to this release definition this is beneficial for users uh, like devops administrators or devops engineers infrastructure or id support guys and this one is the default one let's go back to one of them and see the type of permission you have so you see that under the general you've got a bunch of uh, seven eight uh, permission uh, these are not set at the moment however you could uh, tweak them basis your organization name so remember we had a delete sign underneath our projects if you go to the our project setting it had a delete sign over here so if you don't want end users to delete any project you would probably deny it and then uh, if you want folks to manage edit project permission level uh, probably allow them uh, manage pro uh, project properties probably allow you don't want them to users to rename your team project deny it and then uh, suppress notification probably deny and then update project visibility uh, keep it deny and a lot of other cool features then you've got the boards underneath the boards we've got tag definition delete restore uh, analytics underneath the analytics you've got uh, the view analytics options and we're not using test plans so we we we, we do have some uh, set of uh, permission right over here you want if you want users to to create let them create the test runs you could probably allow it and then if you don't want users to uh, delete any test runs so that you could to keep a track of all the tests you've been running you would uh, probably deny it then manage test configuration allow and all sort of features uh, once you're done go to members and uh, um, you see that all of the uh, these settings you just uh, saved are auto saved and then you've got the members uh, which we've added you could add multiple members over here as well uh, remove them right from uh, clicking the three buttons and then members of by default it uh, takes from the uh, it, if you notice this build administrator do not have the contributor inheritance because you build administrator is a limited set of features which means you build administrator do not have uh, access of the features uh, majority of the features are missing it's mainly revolves around the builds uh, uh, management and that's why you don't see the contributor right over here if you go to the settings you could add the the image and uh, all sort of uh, information right over here and yeah that's pretty much all you could you could do it for any of these uh, uh, by default uh, permissions and if you go to the users you would have all set of users and what type of permissions they have all right that's how you kind of manage uh, the teams and then uh, underneath the teams you could manage the permissions of your teams as well this is specifically specifically beneficial for the uh, teams which has got more number of users and you want to bifurcate those users into multiple teams and then have more granular controller over them uh, and that's how you can kind of have a more control over the permissions and settings you want to let them use in terms of azure devops that's it for now i hope this was informative. I'll see you in a while. Thank you.